let us look to the Lord in prayer. Precious Lord, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to come to your presence once again as we meditate on the fall of creation and the redemption that is possible in Christ. We pray that your grace would be upon us. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Our opening song today is 10,000 Reasons. The psalm for today is Psalm 53. Today's psalm is taken from Psalm 53. Fools say to themselves, there is no God. Fools are evil and do terrible things. None of them does anything good. God looked down from heaven on all people to see if anyone was wise, if anyone was looking to God for help. But all have turned away. Together, everyone has become evil. None of them does anything good, not a single person. Don't the wicked understand? They destroy my people as if they were eating bread. They do not ask God for help. The wicked are filled with terror where there had been nothing to fear. God will scatter the bones of your enemies. You will defeat them because God has rejected them. I pray that victory will come to Israel from Mount Zion. May God bring them back. Then the people of Jacob will rejoice and the people of Israel will be glad. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, where will the end. Amen. The epistle lesson for today is from Romans chapter 3, verses 21 to 26. Today's New Testament reading is taken from Romans chapter 3, verses 21 to 26. But God has a way to make people right with him without the law, and he has now shown us that way which the law and the prophets told us about. God makes people right with himself through their faith in Jesus Christ. This is true for all who believe in Christ, because all people are the same. All have sinned and are not good enough for God's glory, and all need to be made right with God by his grace, which is a free gift. They need to be made free from their sin through Jesus Christ. God gave him as a way to forgive sin through faith in the blood of Jesus' death. This showed that God always does what is right and fair, as in the past when he was patient and did not punish people for their sins. And God gave Jesus to show today that he does what is right. God did this so that he could judge rightly and so he could make right any person who has faith in Christ. Here ends the reading. Let us look to the Lord in prayer. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our heart be acceptable unto thee, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. On this day, the first Sunday of February, a week before the beginning of the Great Lent, we are meditating on the fall of creation and 
the regeneration that is possible in the righteousness of God. Romans chapter 3 verses 21 to 26 is a profound exposition of the Christian understanding of salvation. The entire depth of soteriology is seen beautifully expressed in this particular passage. I would want to draw your attention to some key elements in this experience of salvation that Paul beautifully summarizes in this text, understanding what the essence of Christian faith is all about. The creation was all about bliss in Christ, beauty in a wonderful relationship in Christ. But the wild serpent of old, entering into a conversation with the poor parents Adam and Eve, so the story went, prompted them to sin, hide from God. And the big question, where are you, O mortal, had to be answered with, we are hiding. Hiding because we have sinned. Hiding because of fear. How are we interpret that story? Jesus Christ and the experience of salvation available in Christ was a panacea to the fall that happened in the Garden of Eden, to the engulfment that sin brought in into our life, and a redemption from all the bondages that came hitherto. What is Paul telling us as the essence of the salvation story? Primarily, in Christ, Paul says, the righteousness of God is disclosed. The same righteousness that was attested by law, by the prophet. And that righteousness is available through faith in Christ Jesus. The in Christos experience, the in Christ Jesus experience. Christ Jesus is the exposition of the righteousness of God, the revelation of the righteousness of God, the revelation of the salvific plan of God, the revelation that was being talked about by the law, the revelation that was being talked about by the prophets. And therefore, the first an important thought is Christ is the disclosing of God's plan for the salvation of humanity, God's plan for the redemption of entire creation. Secondly, when Paul writes about the righteousness of God in this particular text, he writes, this righteousness is for all, all who believes in Christ Jesus. There is going to be no distinction. Whatever be your language, whatever be your race, whatever be your caste, whatever be your community, whatever be your background, whatever be your ethnicity, in case you are willing for a new identity in Christ, that identity is available for all, irrespective of you, who you are. It is also true, irrespective of the background of sinfulness that you may have, the possibility of the new beginning, the renewal, is in the righteousness of God. The reason? All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Dear friends, in the cross, in the cross, what happens is that all human-made barriers are broken off. God is opening up a new gateway to the presence of God where all of us in Christ can come together and approach and embrace the throne of grace. And therefore, the second insight from this particular passage is that salvation is for all all who are willing to put their trust in Jesus Christ. Thirdly, the righteousness of God 
is all about justification by grace and is a gift which happens through redemption in Christ Jesus. Four important words. The first is justification. Whatever you have done, whoever you are, whatever be that which keeps you away from God, whatever be that that has identified within yourself, affecting your identity, you are going to be justified by God. Justified in the sense that chosen and presented as acceptable before God despite your shortcomings because those shortcomings are going to be erased away. And this experience of erasing the shortcoming is an experience of grace, not by works, not by your tall claims, not because who you are, but because who God is and the willingness of God to be gracious. God's riches at Christ's expense is one of the best definitions we have had about grace. This goes on and says this justification by grace is a gift. It is the joy of the giver, full of love, that this gift of justification by grace is given to everyone who is willing to take the offer. And that justification, that grace, that gift becomes complete when you appropriate it and understand what redemption in Christ is. Whatever be the pits into which you have fallen, whatever be the cells into which you are locked up, redemption means you are being be, you are going to be unlocked, you are going to be lifted up, you are going to be going to be free. The fourth aspect of righteousness that Paul talks about in this particular text is the whole idea of the sacrifice of atonement. The Old Testament theologians very clearly knew what that means. There was the lamb of sacrifice. On Yom, Yom Kippur, the festival of atonement, or on any other day, all the sinfulness of humanity were thrust upon the lamb. And with the slaughter of the lamb, they believed, shedding of the blood gave redemption, gave the righteousness of God an opportunity to cover your sinfulness. And as the Baptist pointed out, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Here is Paul writing, in Christ's experience, is God putting forward a sacrifice of atonement by the blood of the Lamb, effective through faith, the sins of humanity, the burden of the sin of creation is taken away. You are liberated, you are free, you have a new beginning in Christ. Fifthly, the text talks about the righteousness of God is all about in God's forbearance, the punishment of sinfulness is passed over. Sins already committed, sins previously committed, are no longer going to be counted. The word Passover is a word very familiar to all of us. There is death coming down to dance in the form of the killing of the firstborn as the last among the series of plagues that the people in Egypt faced in the process of liberation. And when this last plague was coming in, they were told, let your doorpost have the sign of the blood of a lamb that was to be killed. And if there is the blood of the lamb as a seal on the doorpost, the angel of death would pass over, would pass over. And that exactly is the beautiful concept that Paul takes in to help us understand what salvation in Christ is all about. He says, you might be sinful, but once you acknowledge your sinfulness, 
once you are willing to put your trust in Jesus Christ, then what happens is when the punishment of sin comes in, the angel of the punishment of sin sees you and God instructs in grace that it passes over, passes over sins previously committed. What, what an experience of redemption. From all the bondages of yesterday, a new beginning is being made possible in Christ. And that is the beauty of salvation. You are no longer continuing in the experience of fallenness. You are no longer continuing in the anxiety and fear of fallenness. You are no longer continuing in the shame of fallenness. But instead, you are having a fresh start, a start of freedom, a start of liberation, a start in a new relationship with Christ and a new relationship with the redeemed community around us. 6.3, he says, the righteousness of God, which talks about the freedom from the fallen nature of us, is not just an experience of the past. It is an experience of the present. He himself, Jesus Christ, is the righteous one. And God in his righteousness, justifies everyone, continues to justify everyone who are willing to put their trust in the atonement of Christ, who are willing to put their trust in the salvation that is offered free by Christ. Believe in him. Believe that he died for you and me. Believe that he is able to liberate us and he has already liberated us from the clutches of sin and believe that he has already made us free to a new beginning in Christ. And that is a continuing experience. You no longer have to go back into the chains of sin and sinfulness, but you continue to be redeemed as a redeemed people in the walk of freedom. That is the beauty of this righteousness of God that we experience. And of course, as we continue to prepare for the Lenten season, we also realize, lastly, that the righteousness of God has an eternal dimension. All that we talked about as experience of the here and now, as experience of the present, is about preparing us to the not yet, to the beauty of the blissfulness of the kingdom that Christ has promised to you and me. Dear friends, Lent is a time of repentance. Lent is a time of reconciliation. Lent is a time of a fresh relationship with Christ. Lent is a time of a fresh relationship with each other. Lent is a time of a fresh renewal. Lent is a time preparing for a fresh rejoicing. And the basis of all this is the righteousness of God disclosed in Christ Jesus, available for all, a gift of grace, redemption that is in Christ, a sacrifice of atonement by the blood through faith. It is God's forbearance in passing over sins of our past. It is God himself who is righteous justifies everyone who puts their trust in Jesus Christ, enable us, enabling us to have an already experience of the blissfulness of the kingdom, leading us to eternity, leading us to the not yet dimensions of the beauty of the people who are redeemed, singing glory unto Almighty, the kingdom of love, the kingdom of justice and kingdom of peace. Let's pray. Gracious Lord, as the world continue to fight the pandemic, we pray that your grace would be upon us. You would bring healing. You would bring your righteousness as an overarching shadow over us. Enable us to understand the in Christ experience as an experience not just redeeming us from the clutches of the pandemic and the evil of the world, but redeeming us from the entire experience of fallenness that creation experiences 
right from the Garden of Eden. May this new liberation, new rejoicing in Christ, in the righteousness of Christ, be an experience that all of us experience and share with the entirety of creation. Heal us, O Lord, and lead us to your kingdom. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Our closing hymn today is Bless the Lord, O my soul. How can we but bless him because of the redemption, the salvation that we have received? Let us pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And the benediction, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with each one of us now and forevermore. Amen.